what is localism? Localism basically means the idea that communities should be dealing with the problems that are facing them themselves, rather than waiting for anyone from central government in Wellington to fix it for them. So whenever you've got a local issue, a genuinely local issue, you should actually ask the people on the ground, how do you want to deal with that? And only when that is no longer possible, because there are some national concerns, you should actually then delegate it up to a higher level. So you can call this localism, you can call it um, decentralization, you could call it another fancy word, subsidiarity, but it all means the same, trust the locals. Yes, it's a lovely concept, but it'll never work um, because local government in this country is incompetent and almost useless. So why would we want to promote it in New Zealand? Well, first of all, the reason why it doesn't work in New Zealand, and you're right, it doesn't work right now. And let me tell you, I was at the conference. I can tell you about the conference later. Um, the reason is we have a system that is actually not designed for it. It's not designed to make it work. The basic problem there is we are asking local government, and you know local government better than I do, we're asking local government, can you please build roads and can you lay the pipes and can you deal with the neighbours when it comes to economic development or residential development. But when that development happens, the upside of it, the GST, the income tax, the corporate taxes, they go to Wellington. And so we have one tier of government that constantly pays for development and the other one that gets all the benefits from development and that's why it doesn't work. And so when I spoke at the conference last week, I said to the councillors and the mayors in the room, well, I think central government will always hate you because central government thinks you're a bunch of useless idiots and you don't know what yep. you're doing. And yep. you will always hate central government because you think, well, they are making us all this kind of stuff, but they're never really paying for any of this and we're getting these unfunded mandates. And so central government hates local government, local government hates central government, but it is the system. And I said, don't hate the players, hate the system, hate the rules of the game. It's, it's that what's broken, really, and um, don't take it personally. I mean, I've been dealing with this issue now for 12 years, and I can tell you it doesn't matter who is in government. It doesn't matter who the Minister of Finance is, and it doesn't matter who the Mayor of Wellington or Auckland is. They all hate each other because they can't get along because the system is stacked against them. And I encourage the conference to think about it in that way and then find a better way, uh, some agreement with central government in reforming the rules of the game so we can actually all ideally end up on the same page. Um, all right, just thinking that one through, um, and you're right, central government and local government, for as long as I've been in politics, have distrusted each other. And you're absolutely right, I've been in central government as well, and this goes back to the 90s, but I'm sure it predated me. And that is that uh, central government distrusts local government. It thinks that local government, Oliver, A, isn't very bright, B, isn't made of very bright people, and that's both elected officials and staff, and C, if left to their own devices, will only stuff it up. And I guess mm -hmm. the state of New Zealand's infrastructure, or the stuff that's under the ground, wherever you are at the moment, whether you're in Auckland or Wellington, um, is a pretty good indication of that. How are you going to change that attitude when um, local government needs to do a bit of a mea culpa and say, yeah, we haven't been keeping up with what we should be doing. We haven't, in actual fact, been doing our basic job. Yeah, it is a chicken and egg problem. So what you want is, of course, you want more competent councils with better people. But in order to get the better people, you also need to give councils more power and money because otherwise, I mean, who would actually feel that this is something um, that you would really want to do and where you want to spend your time in. It, it takes a certain degree of commitment, and you got it, of course, but for many other people, they would say, given the limited competences of our councils, why would I even bother trying to have a career as a councillor, let alone a mayor? And so what we have to do is actually we have to really fix the system first before we can actually hope to attract a different kind of leadership into local government affairs. And unless we do that, we will always have these problems. And so I remember many conversations I've had with um, central government politicians expressing their frustration and their despair, really, when it comes to local government. Um, and they say, well, these guys never really do what is good for the country and what we would like them to do. But I always say to them, well, is it any wonder? You don't give them anything to benefit from when it comes to development. So why do you think they will be pro-development? So 
what I would say is actually change the system, change the rules of the system, and you will probably get better outcomes. And that okay. was my message to the conference, and that's my message to central government too. We've got three tiers of government in this country. We've got central government, we've got regional mm -hmm. councils uh, and government in this country, and then we've got territorial authorities, city councils, and district councils as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Whereas well, there's five million of us. Um, there are, I think, 70-odd councils throughout New Zealand at a local body level. Um, uh, are we just, are we over-governed? No, we're not. Um, clearly not. When you compare the size of New Zealand councils internationally, you can see that our councils are actually relatively large by international standards. You don't even have to go to countries like Switzerland that are massively more devolved than us. I mean, in Switzerland, you have 9 million people. Geographically, it's the size of Canterbury, but they've got 2,000 councils. You can even go to countries where you think, well, they are probably more centralized, like France, and you can find that their councils are much smaller. I don't have the precise figure in front of me, but I think the typical French council area has about three, 4,000 people. So, no, New Zealand councils are actually relatively large. The solution is not to amalgamate them. The solution here is actually to give them proper incentives and give them a proper financial and fiscal setup. That will actually fix a lot of our problems. So how do, so how do I make my council more efficient? How do I set it up so that I've got the right people doing the right thing for my local community? Well, you currently can't because it is not for you to fix. It is actually something that only central government can fix. What we need to do and what the government is actually moving towards is to give councils a better source of revenue that actually rewards them for when they get things right. So the government is now talking about GST sharing, for example. They want to share the GST revenue from new residential development. So just picture what it would do. If a council says yes to new development, if they say yes to building more houses in the community, which is what we all want, of course, because we've got a housing crisis, and in the future, under the government plans, the council would actually keep some of the extra GST revenue that comes out of this housing activity. And if they had that kind of incentive, they would behave differently. Because currently, what we see is all too often councils will try to delay development, will try to push it away, because in the end it is costly for them, it doesn't yield them anything, it doesn't give them any revenues, and therefore it doesn't get done. In the future, if they have some GST revenue that they can actually go for, if they make it happen, they will keep that money, and I predict that will change the way they behave. And I would do that more systematically still. I would say whenever a council does something right, right for the local economy, growing the economy, delivering more land for development, growing business opportunities, and they generate more tax revenue, if they could keep some of that, again, they would try to make all of this happen. Currently, of course, councils, they basically have a land tax. We call this rates, and they can always collect the rights, no matter what happens in the community, whether the community grows, whether the community has more economic growth, whether there's more economic activity, it doesn't really matter. You can always collect the rates. In my ideal future scenario, we would change that so they have an incentive to really grow the local economy, make stuff happen, and then they get rewarded by from it. And I think that's the way to go.